Hi, Mum, you're on camera. What's my mum? <laughs> Hello, I'm Akwesi Brendi Mensa, and this is Chef Making Snacks. Today, I'm going to be making one of my favourite childhood dishes, a tot. The main components of the dish are plantain, scotch bonnet, red palm oil, and peanut butter. Let's get cooking. Why have I kept my arms behind my back this whole time? <laughs> I just realised like, I look like a f***ing sentinel or something. <laughs> So the first ingredient that we're going to talk about today is plantain. As we go from here to here, the final product is kind of softer and sweeter. So I am going to be using plantains around this level of ripeness. First up, we're going to take our plantain and essentially get it ready for its little bath. We're going to boil the plantain for approximately 20 to 25 minutes. Ideally, we want them to be kind of fork tender. When you take them out after that time, you can check with your thumb, just kind of press in. We're going to be mashing it, so we want it to be quite soft. If it needs a bit longer, pop it back in the boiling water for another five minutes. OK, so next up, we're going to prepare the garnish, basically. So first in, we're going to add the palm oil. Here we have two options of what you could call a flavour bomb. On the one hand, we have Maggi, and in there is a standard Maggi star cube. I've just crushed it there. On the other hand, we have uh, Dawa Dawa or Iru, which is fermented locust bean. So I think Black History Month is um, a very good time for us as a community to share, reflect, look forwards, have conversations about what we can build, how we can work with each other, how we can collaborate. And I think it's a good time for other people to engage in black culture in a respectful way, but in a way where everybody can have conversations, some of those difficult, you know, with a hope to, you know, building a better future for ourselves. These lovely uniform shallots and let them soak up that flavour from the oil. You don't have to cook your onions, you could put them straight on. I prefer that they've been cooked slightly, but I'm only cooking them on one side so they'll have a little bit of firmness to them also. Next up, we're going on to topping number two, a boiled egg. To this day, I do not understand why so many dishes in Ghana <laughs> have a boiled egg, but um, I may call my parents and ask them, we need to get to the bottom of this. Hi, mum, you're on camera. Watch my mum. Um, Hello, everybody. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Nice to see you're working very hard. <laughs> Why is there boiled egg on everything? The pot is usually meant to be for celebration purposes. Okay. So, like birthdays, Christmas time, but now, over the years, the pot is just eaten at any time. But why is boiled egg on so many dishes in Ghana? Watch it, corned beef stew, everything. Fine, I'll ask my mum this evening. <laughs> I'm asking my mum and my mum is going to ask her mum. Okay. Tell them not to give up, I'll come back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> bye bye. Wasn't the clearest answer. Hopefully before the end of this we get an answer, but if not, you know, it, the question will continue. So I'm really looking forward to us opening up in 2022 at the Africa Centre. It's going to be a space in London for anybody that would, you know, like to learn more about black culture, black art. Yeah, I'm excited. I might not look it, but I'm excited. Okay, we're back at the final stage with all of our prepped ingredients in front of us. Here we have some peanut butter, molden salt, scotch bonnet, shallots, plantain, some extra red palm oil for garnishing, some peanuts, and of course, our boiled eggs. And this is our asanka, which is a traditional bowl used in a lot of West Africa. We're going to take our shallots into the bowl, a quarter of a large scotch bonnet, de-seeded, and we're just gonna grind those in a bowl. So the bowl has got kind of grooves in to make the grinding process. I guess it kind of provides ridges and friction for things to kind of get stuck in. And boy, it's been a minute. <laughs> Shout out to all the mums and aunties that do this flawlessly. Okay, so when you've ground that down into a kind of chunky paste, however you're happy with it, my arm's tired, so I'm gonna finish there. And um, then we're gonna next add in some peanut butter. And I'm just going to incorporate, bring everything together from around the rest of the pot. I'm ready for the next item, which is the plantains that have been boiled. I think plantain would be the thing that would never really get to settle. Like my mum would be making it. She'd be there just frying <laughs> plantains and everyone would just be like coming to take one, one, one. So that's, you know, definitely up there. My arm is hella tired. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for editing team to do their work. <laughs> I'm the eldest child in an African family, so I was my mother's little helper. So I was always in and around the kitchen from a young age, kind of like the CEO's office. So conversations about uni or telling offs or the occasional slap, they, they all happened there. 
So I'm going to bring it into the middle a little bit, create a little bit of a mound. And then the shallots, that was infused with dawa dawa. And then we've got our peanuts. And last but not least, sit. Let's sit our egg up there and our avocado. And if we would like for a bit of garnish, a little bit of coriander. So here we are finally, here's the dish, etot, uh, which is a plantain mash in the Asanka bowl. This is how we would have it back home. So I'm going to have a taste, eating with my hands as, as would be normal. The heat level is really nice, the scotch bonnet, you could add more, not too spicy. The peanuts give it a really nice texture. And take a bit of egg, add it to the plantain mash and some peanuts and then I've got everything in there. It's a thumbs up from me. Obviously I'm biased, but... <laughs> <laughs> and this has been Etor, as I know it, as I ate it growing up. Be sure to check out the recipe. If you make it, get in contact, hit me up on socials at Kwesi B. Mensa, or you can come and see us in 2022, that is the right year, at <laughs> the Africa Centre, where we'll be opening uh, my debut London restaurant named Tatale. I think that's everything, so I'm gonna sign off there. This has been Chefs Making Snacks. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed watching the recipe being made and learning a bit more about Ghanaian culture, and we hope to see you soon. Until next time, thank you.